My name is Richard Lindsay. I'm the uh, junior senator of the 8th district here in Kanawha County, and I uh, want to take a few moments to speak to you uh, or to everyone in this room about Senate Bill 12, which was pulled off the agenda today on third reading. As I understand it, it's only to make the bill worse than what it already is. But we as a caucus here in the state Senate believe or oppose Senate Bill 12 because basically what it does is it takes out of the hands of physicians and healthcare providers health decisions and requires them to go through a process where their decisions are being questioned by county commissioners and uh, some state authority. Um, I'm going to let Dr. Stallings, Senator Stallings, talk about more or less the, the, the substance of our opposition because he's better positioned to do so. But I, will, I do want to say this, at a time when our, our, our local boards of health are doing a tremendous job and, and, and making sure that our people are vaccinated. I want to speak specifically about Dr. Young in Kanawha County, who is just amazing and fantastic at what she does. This is the last, this is the last moment or the wrong time to be trying to question or, or at least attempt to question the decisions of our health professionals. And with that, I'll go ahead and leave it to Dr. Stallings. Rich, thank you so much. I am uh, Senator Ron Stallings. I represent the seventh senatorial district. Boone, Logan, Lincoln, parts of Mango, parts of Wayne counties. I'm a physician for the past 36 years in my hometown of Madison. Senate Bill 12 and its House version, Senate Bill or House Bill 2015, basically is an anti-public health bill that politicizes public health. Uh, every uh, rule or regulation that uh, has uh, comes before uh, the Board of Health uh, right now is the decisions made by the Board of Health. Uh, and uh, the County Commission then, uh, who in many cases is the pointing body, uh, really, if they don't like the public health decisions that are going on, they can replace people on the Board of Health. Uh, however, uh, public health, again, if I can uh, quote some folks from the Journal of the American Medical Association, Public health is critical for society's well-being and needs protection from the vagaries of partisan politics. What model of funding streams and governance structure can help insulate public health institutions from near-term political concerns and position them to generate and disseminate data and science to best serve the public, including anticipating and responding to public health emergencies? Senate Bill 12 would require that local health boards be approved by their appointing entities, county commissions and city councils. In addition, they place local boards of health under the authority of the state health officer in times of emergency. The few words these bills add to the code belie the potential effect on all, on the health of all. So what the American Heart Association, American Lung Association are concerned about is clean indoor air. And that's what you should be concerned about. There's been various county commissions throughout the state in the past that wanted to be able to allow indoor smoking. Uh, we've been fortunate that that's uh, uh, not been allowed to happen. However, if Senate Bill 12 passes, then whatever the county commission wants. Now we've heard from the county commission associations, we've heard from the public health. County commissions don't want this to pass. The boards of health don't want it to pass. Public health people, advocates don't want it to pass. And it would not have passed in the health committee. If you remember uh, that we were getting ready to vote on the bill, and I really think that bill would have been uh, rejected uh, because of the conversation we were all having, who we heard from, Greg Puckett, uh, you know, various people that were passionate about how this is a bad for public health bill. However, if you all remember, uh, there was a, a text to the chairman. The chairman went in the back, talked to some people. They came back in after having a Republican health caucus and voted for the bill seven. All Republicans voted for it. And of course, all we uh, Democrats voted against it and therefore it passed. So, you know, it's, it's a, this isn't the only bill coming folks. The uh, Senate Bill 334 is an anti-harm reduction bill that, that really 
uh, many of the public health officials, especially in West Virginia, where we're having in Kanawha County, uh, one of the world's worst HIV outbreak, uh, according to the Center for Disease Control, and also hepatitis C and other needle type diseases are running rampant here in West Virginia. And so we come up with an anti-harm reduction bill. We, we're doing an anti-public uh, health bill. Uh, you know, and again, these bills will result in higher death rates, uh, more heart disease, our children's exposures to smoke. And so just when a time when we should be really, really focusing pro-public health, we're running 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Sad times. Be glad to take any questions. Or... Yeah, what are we expecting tomorrow? They've obviously delayed it one more day. Um, it's on third with the right to amend. Um, obviously, you've got concerns about how the bill is currently. Uh, are we concerned about any possible amendments that could actually even erode it even further? Yes, yes. It's my understanding that, uh, again, what we've done with this bill is it's been a bad bill. They've tried to put lipstick on it and change it just a little bit, but they've not been able to really do that to make it a, a bill that would be pro public health. So the grandfather of the rules uh, mechanism, uh, where if you already have an ordinance that doesn't allow smoking in your county, indoor smoking, uh, then that rule as the way the bill is set now uh, would not be looked at until there, a future where they, uh, an amendment to that section, then they could go ahead and open up that uh, rule and, and uh, make it, uh, uh, you know, change it so that you could allow indoor smoking. The Carnes Amendment that I understand basically takes away that grandfather and says, all health department rules must be reviewed and signed off on by the uh, appointing agency, whether it's a county commission or a city um, uh, ordinances. So it's, yes, it's, they've tried to clean it up, make it look better. It's not better, it's still bad. And then the, the amendment uh, tomorrow would make it a lot worse. You know, when I saw Senate Bill 12, I'll just digress a little bit. I, I was thinking, you know, we have understood what public health has done, even though we've, you know, make them uh, fight with both hands tied behind their back, but not funding them. You know, these health departments that are small and out in my area should have 10 people on them. There's three. And so they're trying to do contact tracing. They're trying to do vaccinations. They're trying to uh, do all the other things, the sanitation, the wells, all the restaurant inspections. So during this pandemic, I thought, surely we will make our public health system more robust, fund it better so that they can hire more people to do, do the job that uh, these people are just absolutely trying and working so hard, but still yet, it could be a much more robust response. And so I said, Senate Bill 12, and I saw some sponsors on it. I said, all right, the docs are on it. Man, this is gonna be great. I looked at it and I'm like, oh my goodness. This is not a pro-public health bill. This is an anti-public health bill. So, uh, you know, and again, I've been trying to fight it since. I mean, we have some very respected public health figures throughout the entire state of West Virginia that think this is bad policy. They've been vocal. They've written, you know, letters to the editor, et cetera. If I can just follow up on what Dr. Solomon just said, I mean, we should be, at this point, we should be expanding the resources for our public health departments, our local health departments. Instead, the leadership of this Senate, the Republicans, all they want to do is curtail. That's all they're interested in. During the same committee meeting, not one witness, not one said, yeah, this is a good bill. In fact, we heard from county commissioners and, and, and folks from the local health departments. They've all unanimous, Republican, Democrat, independent, said this is a bad bill. So your readers need to understand that. I want to make sure that gets across because health decisions should be made by physicians and health healthcare providers. We are, in a, we are in a place, so to speak, right now where we don't, we, we don't have senators that realize the value of wearing a mask. A year into this epidemic, 500,000 people have lost their lives, and they're making a mockery of it. And the reason why is because it's become a political issue. 
which it should have never been to begin with. And protecting our health departments, giving them the independence to make these decisions, keeps the politics out for the benefit of the public. And that's why we oppose it, and that's why we support, we've always supported as a cause, more money and resources to our local health departments. That's so small, I can't read. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Do any of you all have any um, comments from Senate Bill 11 today, the, the result of that, if, if you don't mind? Sure. I mean, I spoke okay. against the bill. Um, I guess. Um, you know, I wanted to ask when the bill was presented by Senator Rucker, I wanted to ask her to get her on the record and see whether or not she believed the bill encouraged teachers to stay, whether it improved education, whether her educators would come because of the passage of the bill. And she said no to all of those. And we are, again, we've talked about the importance of broadband, how our students are falling behind, how it's hurting. You know, Senator Ellenfeld talked about the spread of, of opioids through our state. And we're two weeks into this session, and, and I know there have been two other education bills presented and passed by the Senate. But the third bill is a bill that more or less is just retribution. Everyone knows already that according to case law or common law, that it's unlawful for public employees to strike. Yet the Senate leadership and all their power and all their responsibilities want to take time just to make, just to codify, and I believe it's just for retribution. There is no education value to it. We heard Senator Carr talk about the need for it because of our students. Well, I think everyone would agree that in order to protect our students and help them improve, we have to have teachers that are happy to be at work, who, 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 who believe in their job, and who won't face any retaliation by the people who sign their paychecks. And so, that was my opposition to the bill. It was unnecessary. It was unneeded. I think even Senator Rucker would agree with me, although she didn't, that but for the strike, they would not have gotten the pay they deserve. They would not have gotten the promises of PEI that were made. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for coming up. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Dan, thank you for setting up the Zoom as well. Wait a minute. We have questions, Senator oh. Stone. Hey, Doc. Says the retail association had issues with the rollout of COVID nineteen restrictions on businesses. Do you think SB twelve addresses their concerns at all? It seems like the bill may have gotten away from what they really wanted. That's from Taylor Strong. Yeah, uh, my understanding is that uh, one of the reasons we're seeing the Senate Bill twelve is because certain counties uh, didn't uh, okay uh, vape shops and tobacco shops as being uh, critical uh, employees. So that, uh, you know, in some cases that was, uh, you know, so again, there's 43 different health departments. Some of them, you know, Mid Ohio Valley has several counties in it. Uh, there's a couple with, uh, you know, Cabell Huntington, you know, so there, there is a different way of how uh, they decide who is uh, who are critical employees. And I guess a couple of these uh, counties uh, didn't recognize those. And so the lobbyists for uh, some of these folks, I guess, went to the leadership and said, hey, man, we need to have this bill. And again, we're talking about public health here. <laughs> and uh, I certainly hope that we don't uh, go back to the days where you know, just because of this one issue, now we can basically undo clean indoor air, clean water standards. Uh, when's the last time you've uh, been in a restaurant and, uh, you know, didn't you, you enjoyed being able to eat and not smell people's ashtrays? We may well be going back to those days in that setting. 